But no, ma. I mean, in a way, I'm come here to mourn because it's a loss of a bookshop. In a way, I'm come here to celebrate because it was a fantastic ex uh, experiment. Not just experiment, much more than experiment. Tell us about well, YBS. Um, dressed in black, I can see. I don't know if that is. <laughs> no, I'm one of your color. I, no, 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 no. It's just black is fashionable. It's just um, well, you see, um, to to those who. Um, have just come to know that the bookshop is closing down indeed, it might be a um, bit of a shock and as you say you feel sad and you know, what is this, the bookstore which has been an institution. Iconic. Yes, for so many decades. Not uh, just for Goa. Yes, not just for Goa, not just for Goa, for uh, in India. We had a huge clientele all over India and we also had people from abroad who had come to know and to visit Goa and so on and things like that. But it was, the closure was in the offing for about um, at least five to six years now. Mm. It was, there was always uh, this at the back of our minds that, uh, well, the bookstore has to, maybe have to shut it sometime because we could not find anybody else who wanted to carry it on in the same tradition that it was. Uh, this was over the years. But about five or six years when my manager had um, retired, she wanted to uh, retire, uh, I was seriously thinking of closing it down. But the two staff who have been with us for over 25 years, they uh, came up to me and said that we'll manage it. We know how to do everything. If you give us a secretarial assistance for letters and so on, we'll manage. So they continued uh, for the last um, four or five years. But the last two years, COVID dealt a fatal, block, uh, fatal blow in the sense that uh, the sales just dropped. I mean, people were not at all interested in buying books or, you know, looking at the book industry. And so many bookshops around have closed I know, down. I know. There's an overall crisis. Overall crisis. I, I agree with that totally. And uh, there are a lot of problems, you know. Even in publishing, there is a problem, you know, right from getting ISBNs to the, to the GST on, on printing and the lack of interest and the yeah. difficulties and all these kind of things. Uh, but that apart, we I, I, I understand that fully and that's the most immediate issue. But let's not lose track of the history of OIBS. And if you can give me a few minutes, I want to record that today. Okay, okay. How so, did it start? So, uh, it started as Third World Bookstore Society way back in 1980s, 84, 86, 84, 85. Uh, the nomenclature at that time was First World, Third World. Right. And we were wanting to celebrate and promote the literature which came from the so-called third world, which is the Asian countries, the African countries. We were largely focusing on, con interested in focusing on Africa because there was, a, we knew that there was a, a, a wealth of literature, some so very many well-known authors and India knew nothing about them. Uh, we imagined that there were other countries in Asia who had material also in English. We were in a certain sense limited by the uh, language. We couldn't go into other languages because English was the most familiar one. So we started out with Third World Bookstore with the aim to go to countries outside of India in the third world, Asia, Africa, and get books. You had a fantastic collection of Africa books. Yes, books. because we got a grant yeah. to go to Africa. And we went to three, four countries in Africa, to Uganda, to Tanzania, to um, we went to Kenya. And we scored the bookshop. Tough job, no? Went, tough job. Tough yeah, job. it was a tough job because there was nothing like it before. Nothing ready-made. Nothing ready-made. We had to go to the bookshop, we had to find out what, were, what was published. And the most important thing is that nobody in Africa wanted to really sell to us. They wanted us to go to the London agent. All of them had agencies in London. But the London books uh, were priced in pounds. And that was not suitable to the Indian audience. Plus, naturally. ideologically, it doesn't make sense that you have to root everything through the former colony in that it sense. It was no? it was a, um, a, a very firm view of ours that what is sold in Africa, at the same price, we should be able to sell it in India. So we had to literally convince them two things. One was that their material was worthwhile. We wanted it for India. And second that we that we wanted it at the same price 
that they were selling it in Africa. Whatever the, 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 the rate converted into rupees, we would pay the transport and so on. They were scratching their heads about this because they had never done this before. They didn't know if it would work with their agencies, would there be a problem and so on. But we forced them to consult. We said that your agencies have no market in India and they will not object. They consulted and they figured out and so we, we threw in a whole lot of, you know, third world ideas and so on. And eventually we managed to get books, good literature from Africa, shipped from Africa to India and sold like hot cakes because they were not available at all. Not just the biggies like uh, Vole Soinka or Chinua Echebe, but even children's uh, writing A in lot Africa. of children's writing. Unusual lot, stories. Which, unusual stories. You know. And that's how we went into children's books because Africa had a lot of children's books also. Apart from the, uh, the, the literary stuff, there were lots of children's books. I see. We went also into the social sciences, but there we found the same problem like in India. They were replicas of Western thought. You could make out that they were not really very, very original. So we couldn't, we didn't want to pick up that kind of stuff, which was just simply imitating the West, like many of our Indian intellectuals also were doing in that sense. So the, we didn't go much for the, for the, you know, the, uh, what you call the... Uh, mainstream, so-called mainstream. Yeah, the, the, the non-fiction stuff we okay. didn't pick up, but we did pick up some things. Lot of children books, lot of literature, many other books. Along the then, way... Sorry, along the way you all built up a reputation for being an alternative NGO activist oriented. Before that, we also went to Southeast Asia. The whole of Southeast Asia. They were entirely shocked in Indonesia and um, you know Malaysia and so on that India wanted books from them. There were not that many. They were not even classy books. But uh, in the sense of not many original ideas, but still we picked up from there. So we now had this collection. We also did Pakistan. We went to Pakistan, but we didn't pick up really any books from, from there because we had gone on a, on a sort of a, um, what do you call these, um, invited to a conference see, kind I of see. thing. Anyway, we had therefore books from the whole range of the Asian, Asian countries. And that is when we realized that we also had this vast NGO literature which was not known to the Indian public at all. And that is when the name was changed to Other India Books. So we were no longer third Which world. year? Uh, maybe somewhere 90s. mid, uh, late 90s. Late 90s. Or mid 90s more, mid 90s. So we went around to the NGOs and there of course uh, I had to teach the whole lot of them pricing, how to market the books, what is the rate to put. They don't have a clue about pricing. They had not a clue. Most of them had printed the books and they were lying in a corner of the... of the, of the. the. It'll cost them 100 rupees to print and they'll sell it for 110, that kind of thing. NGO, yeah, just NGO. lying in the corner. But that was very useful and that made us, uh, gave us a big name in India because when you're doing for um, to, uh, college and school students and generally people yeah. who are researching, yeah then there's nothing like getting O Quran NGO literature. You don't want the text. You want the latest figures and facts of I what see. is happening in on the women's ground, yeah. issues, in environment issues, in children's issues, in HIV. And you sourced and, it from all over. Yeah, we sourced it from everywhere. Everywhere. We put out notes saying that, please send whatever you have. Please let us know what you have. Send us a sample copy. Let us know the price. Most people did not have a price. We helped them to price it. And, uh, it I looks think... it looks like uh, it was yesterday and of course I remember <laughs> uh, my memories are this, uh, you know, in fact I was thinking that I would reach Mapsa today and I would drag you to the bookshop and we would take a few last pictures there. It okay. didn't happen because I reached the wrong place for the interview. <laughs> but I remember this very clearly, Norma Alvar is sending me a postcard, Rico, this book is out, where do I get it? And some postcards will still be in my house, I've uh, really? kept them, each and every piece of paper I keep. So, you know, the Goa book section, that I would claim 0.002% credit for because I said Norma you I remember this argument I said Norma you are based in Goa what are you all doing for Goa true so true. you asked me what do you want to do for Goa what do you want me to what do you want me to do for Goa so I said at least start a Goa bookshelf section and that became the first Goa bookshelf section today all bookshops have it very 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 important apart from your contribution in asking what are you doing for Goa was the fact that we had this girl Gauri Divan she had come from Bombay they wanted to event, they yeah, eventually they settle down yeah, yeah. And she said, give me something to do. I have nothing, I have no work. And maybe around that time, I cannot put two and two together, but around that time, your idea of the Goa books had come up. 
So we told her we want to have a Goa book section. Where do I start? We said we don't. She started. Okay. No, we sent her on a six months to go around Goa oh and find gosh. books. It was so tough because books were not being published in Goa, in English at least. They yeah. were watching no, dying. No, those who had them, had them with them, but nobody knew about self -published, them. Self-published, self-published. Self most of them. I even remember one Catholic fellow uh, from Seolim. He had some little... Sebastian little, de Cruz. Yes. And he had it for five rupees. And he said that... He was a sacristan in, in the church. I remember that very so clearly. So, he said that... I, I tried to explain to him marketing. He, he just gave up on me. He said, you want the books, you take it at five rupees, you sell it at whatever you want. <laughs> but our idea was to tell people that, you know, it should not be that the book is available at five rupees in one place and yeah. ten rupees in another place. There must be uniformity. Anyway, I never got through to him, but I got through to many others. And I used to tell the, the uh, um, NGOs and the people here also... You can give it free, but tell them the price is the one that is at the bookstore. Okay. They should not think that bookstore has uh, marked, up, yeah. marked up the yeah. rate. But she brought a collection going all over and everywhere. She brought around 40, 50 wow. books. Which was a big thing in those days. Which was a big thing. And that's how we brought out our Goa catalogue. Yeah, Goa catalogue. We'll come to that next. But there was one book I remember buying from you all. And I was desperately searching for it. I can't find it in my collection. Angelo Pereira or someone. Uh, Vignettes of my homeland. It was a hardbound yes, book. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, he yes, told yes. all about the kunles and all the pots. And we have these Goa tradition groups. And I was thinking, with I need... The drawings. With, the with the drawings. With the drawings. With the drawings. Yes, I, I sent a copy to my father also. Because it was... He was Mr. based Afonso. in... Uh, Pilen, Pilen, Pilen. No, Pilen. 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 That, somewhere, somewhere there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere I need to track that book. Anyway, yeah, anyway, yeah. we got... Okay. Your Goa book list was a masterpiece in itself. It was a it was a great thing because it was the first time that Goa books had even come together. That yeah. there was something as yeah. Goa books. Yeah. Of course, Peter Nazareth did an anthology and gave us an idea that there was something called Goa writing. But your bookshop yeah. gave us the idea that it was there in one place. Yeah, from pickles and papads to... In Goa, there was, in, in the Goa book selection, there was no selection. Whatever was on Goa, we put up. Go, Good, bad, bad or indifferent, whatever. But in the others, we did make a, a yeah. selection. Like the even the NGO literature and general literature we were trying to market, we would uh, make a selection. And we would also be very critical in the catalogs that we did. You, you remember our yeah. catalogs, they went into... 30-40 yeah. pages, yeah. each of them with a photograph of the title yeah. and a, and a, a blurb. The description. Yeah, that, blurb. that 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 uh, that work of writing the the Claude did himself. He didn't trust. He didn't trust anyone. He no, would not trust anyone. Because it had else. to be critical. Yeah. It was also funny. It yeah. was sharp. It yeah. was not the usual buy this book, buy this Correct. book. We would say that this is a book. This is a topic. And a great uh, new information, but it is useful for this X, Y, Z Correct. purpose or whatever. And the Goa book list, of course, was about an 8-page tabloid, 8 yes, or 12 or yes. something like that. And that was as elaborate, as detailed. Yeah, yeah. And people were shocked that there were so many books in one yeah, place. There were so many books. And that's how all the oh, bookshops, bookshop. as you say, now have a Broadway. I mean, to give credit to you all, Broadway, Golden Heart, all the yeah. big bookshops. Uh, Mandovi's had a little, but like, not okay. Not too much. Not but, too much, yeah. but they were not as organized as you all were. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, but uh, the Goa books, bringing it together and putting it out and all uh, is certainly we can take credit for. NGO literature, marking it, across, you know, mailing it and marking it across India, selling it across India, also we can take credit for. Because nobody had ever brought it. And, and to underline it, this is all in a pre-Amazon era, before the idea of Amazon was born, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you all were Amazon before Amazon, yeah. in a sense. <laughs> no, the, no, but Rico, you know, the thing is that when we set up the bookshop, we were very aware that we were in Goa. We didn't have a shop front to sell across. There was no book buying culture yeah. in Goa, first of all. Yeah. How were we ever going to succeed? We went to mail order... In a sense, by default, okay. but out of choice. Okay. Because we recognize that our clientele may not necessarily be in Goa. And we have, our interest was India-wide. Our interest always, because we started out with India. Yeah. We didn't focus on Goa. Right. We started out with India. So how do we reach people across India? And that's where our idea was that the books must be available to the small town folk who don't get bookshops. There are many small towns across many. India, even today, who don't have bookshops. Of course, Amazon is there, but it's not the same thing. It's just one behemoth, corporate there's behemoth. A, there's a whole different feel of browsing through a, uh, 
to a bookshop. Yeah. There's a whole. Yeah. It's like ordering clothes on the net and going to a shop and yeah. looking. That there's plus a kind the of politics of it all. Now, I mean, Amazon is just like you know corporate and pornography and uh, erotica and those kind of things. But our concern was that all the bookshops only stocked first world titles, publisher published yeah. in the West. All published in in the West. That's what all. So we were interested to show that in India you can also publish and you can do it well. So you all would snobbishly not publish reverse snobbism. You all would not allow not allow any books from the West. No, you all would ban them. Kind we of. We never we never marketed. Many people when we set out and started, they said, "But how will you survive?" I see. If you don't have these iconic books, and yeah. true, they were they were iconic books. If you don't Pass have the us. iconic titles, who will come? How will people come to your bookshop? but we were determined to make a go of it and see whether we cannot set up a bookshop and market books published in in them days third world it had to be published here it could not be that you know i become famous because i publish it in london or in usa i my book has got a value and Uh, if it's published we in are India, 40 so years are later we are still facing that issue where where you know the book or the ideas or the write up is valued on where it is published you know which exactly which but i think at, at least it's come down a That's little true. bit That's that true. Did, but at that time it was not possible so then what we did is we started doing we did reprints we did a reprint of silent spring for example we reprinted silent spring in india yeah. we reprinted madhu uh, manu kothari's uh, living dying and the on other cancer, face of cancer, cancer yeah. yeah we we reprinted them he got us the permission for uh, his book saying that okay. they wanted to publish in india in fact is uh, publisher marian boyers in london she said i've got a lot of unsold copies i am willing to don't publish it in india but i am willing to give it to you you only pay the uh, the freight. freight cost we showed her that the freight cost was twice as much as if we publish in india apart from our principle so we got um, uh, titles which may have been you know good titles that Correct. we wanted to we printed them so in other india stuff. press was a sister publication and when did uh, oip come up other india press came up uh, late 90s late 90s i, I think late 90s because a uh, bookstore started bookstore started with uh, um, uh, with uh, consumer literature from malaysia it uh, we just circulated it and i we were surprised that everybody wanted those titles I that's see. how the bookstore started yeah started with that then we had the idea i mean we got into the third world bookstore and so on then we went into um, uh, ngo literature yeah. it became other india and then we went into press so yeah. press may be about uh, 20 years bookstore. wasn't fish curry rice a press title because yes. that came out in the late 80s no and that was iconic no this no. in uh, report on the goan environment fish curry rice i remember Fish curry rice came out in eighties, but fish curry rice, I think, was a Goa Foundation. Ah ha ha ha! Publication. Goa Foundation publication. It was a Goa Foundation. Correct, correct. It, that was amazing, no? That was yeah. an iconic book. Uh, Till report. today, people want copies uh, of the. Let us give us the old printed, but we are not um, willing to print as yet because all the issues have changed. Have changed and, so uh, drastically. The the, yeah, the debate. This is a report. This is a report on the Goan environment to the citizen on different aspects of yes. the hinterland, the uh, coastal, uh, coastal areas. That that material is valuable. The first four five chapters are stay the yeah. same. What are khazans? Where are khazans found in uh, in Goa and so on? All that material, the the Western Ghats, the plains, the uh, significance of the plateaus. That material, yeah. doesn't, but it's the issues, issues which have which have kept on changing. Konkan Railway, uh, Thapar yeah. Dupont, Nylon Six Six, yeah. many of these issues, yeah. and so many new ones are coming, yeah. no, which yeah. need some time. But it needs a uh, lot of effort. To go back a bit, why the idea of a bookshop? Can you think of think of the first time the idea came up and? what you all thought of it see we were we were people very familiar with books it was it was we came from an academic background so books to us was something we were very comfortable with and familiar with and i told you it's the idea that our bookshops are dominated by not books published in the west which is what motivated us how many years before the bookshop the you got this idea it came about slowly or what um Maybe maybe a few years before. Quite um, a bold idea, no? In that sense. Yes, uh, maybe maybe a few years earlier, but it was already part of uh, uh, thinking. You know, there was this uh, Claude research, uh, his uh, PhD th- thing, which was celebrating yeah. the uh, Indian, um, you know, the the fact that science and technology was very prevalent in the, in India, and we did not have to say that everything originated in the West and so on. So the idea was there in yeah. our minds. 
But why a bookshop was because we were familiar with it and that was the only way in which we could um, counter the propaganda that everything comes good comes from the book. I see. So I see. Everything, I mean, books you want, you go to a, you know, look to the West for the books. Who looks at Indian books? Yeah. Uh, even now, Indian now you get a few Indian books. But yeah. earlier in that time, 40 years back, it was a desert almost. You had to try and get a foreign publisher, somebody from there who would publish. I mean, today Rupa and all these people are publishing, you know, yeah. okay, they are, they are big They are big, names. they are quite big. They are big, big names. Yeah. they are big yeah. names in publishing. Then we used to go to the World Book Fair. Scour for titles, look for titles and look for marketing wow. places, where to sell them and so on. So the, so the book fairs, uh, I think the catalogue was also something much sought of because people would keep the catalogue. Because it was the was, collector's <laughs> item and so well done. Yeah, so well done. It came, we used to bring it out every two years. Then uh, later on we brought it out every uh, three, four years and then after it went into the net now. Now yeah. there's no catalogue at all. So uh, all that is there. So I think for, for Goa, if we look at, apart from bringing the Goa books together, there's the fact that we published Goan books. Norman Dantas's book, published here by published by us. There was that Robert Newman. Newman. Uh, Anthro yeah, yeah. Anthropology, yes. So, so we also brought out titles. Fish yes. curry, rice was... Which a were all pioneering titles in the sense that they were way ahead of their time. Even this book of law... law, law yes, Goa Law Reference. Goa Law Reference. Law Reference. A lot of the books that no, would have never seen the light of day if, if it hadn't to be even, for, for this small alternative. Even Fish curry, rice, it was a Goa Foundation... Publication, <laughs> Goa Foundation publication, but the expertise came yeah. from the other India press naturally. And they were all ambitious jobs in that sense. Yeah, they were. Uh, can I shut that? Window? No, no, it's okay. Let the hands be. <laughs> but but did you also feel that Goa lacked a bookshop culture in that sense, a book culture? We thought Goa didn't have a book culture. Yeah, totally. And 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 uh, Rico, to be honest, that is why partly we went into mail order. We didn't uh, expect uh, you know that there would be a. Uh, big sales in Goa because Goa is not known yeah. for a reading public. Yeah. But I found eventually that it is the um, NGO literature that we brought into go uh, into the bookshop, which made uh, the the bookshop a kind of one shop stop for students and people doing research work. A lot of these Librarians. foreigners, foreigners who foreign young foreign tourists who visited Mapsa Market on Friday would end up at the bookshop. Because we were in the lonely, lonely planet. planet. Lonely planet. So we had on Friday we were prepared for troops of people young who would come, tourists. young and middle aged yeah. also. Also, then we would have librarians who would come if they happen to come to Goa. Then they would you know just order for their libraries. Simply order because where else will you get all this the choice? Titles? This choice yeah, in one yeah, shop. Yeah, in one shop. And then mail order helped us yeah. because how to carry back if we were yeah. a shop and you had to carry all this back, you had to go and buy a suitcase first. So here it was just simply take out the prices and send it. Um, and we would market, I we see. would uh, dispatch at, at cost. To be fair to you, Norma, uh, after that you got caught up in this very busy world of legal yeah. activism, yeah. which in part drained your, your, your time. Quite true. Quite had had that not to been there, maybe history would have been different. Though, of course, I'm not wishing that it was not there because that's also important. No, yeah, no. the thing is that we could not pay as much attention hmm. to the bookstore as we gave it in the earlier years. I Which mean, earlier years meaning? 86? In the 80s, right up to... Uh, see, I started legal work in 90s, but my um, intensive legal work must have been in the 2000s onwards. 20 years now, say. But at that time, even in the even in the late in the eighties, definitely, and even in the nineties, uh, I had to go to court maybe once a week, once in two I weeks. Uh, you know, it was it was occasional. Yeah. So preparing for matters did not take up much time. So we could uh, you know expand the expand the um, reach of the bookstore by getting new customers, uh, looking around at uh, conferences where you uh, have lists of people, and you know, because the the bookstore the the titles in a certain sense. They were not limited, but uh, it is it is uh, the reach which would do business for the bookstore. The more you manage to get to people in Patna and BR and uh, the more UP, the more the books would sell. The same books would sell. I see. You know, word they would sell, word but you needed a new new clientele. Yeah. And the old people would come and say, what's new? So we didn't, then we began to have less and less of what's new. Because we stopped going to the World Book Fairs, getting new titles from there. It takes time uh, and a lot yeah. of hard work. And, and even NGOs, unless you chase them up... They are not bothered. They, they don't bother. I remember how much you had to 
ask them, send a sample copy, then ask for copies, then negotiate the price. And it was it was a lot of work that way. But it was... Uh, rewarding. Rewarding in and sense. I had a great interest, you know, in, in the... In, in a way, you map the field, no? You map the field by tapping this un unnoticed potential in that yeah. sense. And you all opened, you know, and, opened and people's eyes. And you must remember that the bookstore ran... Uh, was successful financially as well. Yeah. We never had grants. Yeah. Apart from we got a grant to travel once yeah. to uh, Africa, African countries. Basically, it survived on its own income. I remember two things. One is that you were boasting in one year you made 25 lakhs of uh, revenue. That was a huge that was amount. A huge amount. amount. That was and secondly, you used to tell us, Rico, you think I'm a banya. At the end of the day, who will pay all these salaries? That, uh, <laughs> that's what you are. No, that us. is why I don't... Uh, I have a business sense. Yeah. I mean, I'm not uh, idealistic only. Yeah. I yeah. have a business sense. And I don't consider commission a bad word. Yeah. I I believe it's that commission is business. an honest uh, amount that yeah. you keep for the work that you do. To make it sustainable. So when people would come and say, uh, I want you to keep books in the bookstore and these books are for free, I would say then I don't have a place for it. I don't have a place for it in the sense of I cannot market it and say, there are free books because yeah. I have staff who have to write the bill out, who have to pack the book and have to send it. So I was very uh, uh, keen always that the, you, you you must keep a commission and it's not a bad word. Of course, word. of course. Of it's course. A, it's a, it's and a even alternative word. ventures have to be run on business lines if they are to sustain. Yeah. But tell us some names of people who were there, in the, whom you remember in the bookshop. Oh, uh, who worked yeah, with us? Yeah, yeah. Well, there, well, there was uh, the uh, starting. starting out with uh, Rose, Rose and uh, Jennifer. Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer was my steno. Rose used to handle the books. Then there was Jerry, who Jerry, came as a manager Jerry. later on. There was Madhavi, who worked uh, with the bookshop. There was Loretta, of course, more recent. Ceci uh, and all were, Ceci, were, were no, they were multitasking between OIBS and Goa Foundation or no? No, not they were, they were not Goa Foundation. Okay. We had this also had this TWN one features, arm of TWN, which features. I was involved in also yes, at one stage. Yes, yes, yes. When TWN I quit my job, features yeah. was another arm, and that was see that was part of that same third world concept. Yeah. yeah. That the idea was yeah. that that time that idea of third world was there. There was third world network Malaysia. Yeah. At so that third, time, meaning it's still there, even though people deny its existence. Yeah. There is still a deprived world which you know True. may not. May feel bad to call itself third world, but yeah, but that's yeah. a debate. So TWN Features was also marketing uh, uh, material for publication, which came from Chile and Peru yeah. and Indonesia and Thailand and yeah. India and uh, Sri right. Lanka and so on, not from Europe. So the same. So that is why the newspapers also used to subscribe to TWN Features. Yeah. So Ceci was part yeah. of Third World Bookstore Society, but not the OIB. Yeah, yeah. So the oh, the Third World Book Society had this other India bookstore and TWN features and other India press. And Anita and Santosh. Three. Anita and Santosh. Anita now. and Santosh have now. stayed. Uh, Anita has uh, uh, thirty three years, I think wow. she is, and Santosh just completed twenty five years. Wow. So it's a long. And who long else? Who time. else along the way? Uh, Francis. Yeah. There was. There was. Um, Francis. Yeah, he was our first packer. Then there was. Uh, Ram, who was the second, and Ram. then Santosh took on. Um, there was. Well, there may be some we are forgetting also yeah, now because probably. it's been a long history. No, exactly how many years? 86. We but are everybody. 30, 35, I always 36, take yes. credit that everyone got their salary at the end of the month. Somehow we were able to see. We didn't pay grand salaries, but we didn't pay nothing. Yeah. We paid reasonable salaries. Staff stayed with us. Yeah. They did not leave. Except oh, for marriage. Thomas. Thomas, Thomas. Thomas, remember Thomas? Yeah, Thomas, yeah, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was actually a Goa Foundation staff, but he used I to do see. some work for the other India bookstore. No, we didn't. Uh, we, we paid a decent wage. Yeah. And we had decent timings. Many of the staff liked the timing because who gets to go home at 5 o'clock? I see. But we could do that because we were not a shop front. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you are in, uh, you have a shop. You have to keep open. Then you, the, the people come after work and so on. Yeah. So you have to stay till 8 o'clock. Uh, and you have to have a, a big lunch break yeah, when yeah, you are yeah, closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we were mail order. So the post office was our, I have to give greatest thanks to the Indian Postal Service. Claude was always praising it and it deserves They, it they never let us down. In deliveries. They, they delivered books to whichever corner of the world they had to go to. We rarely lost a parcel. Rarely. I cannot even think of any parcel lost really. They never lost. 
and we had very good packaging. Our um, uh, Santosh and before him uh, also Francis, they had mastered the art of packaging. So we never got a complaint that damaged. the book arrived in a damaged condition. Wow. They used, you know, cardboards and the size of the book and placed it and so on. So a lot of things... You uh, used to make this other point that the customers were very honest and if they ordered a book, you would not even wait till the money came. You would send it and they would pay. Yes, something. normally, normally pe people don't cheat you on books really, I think. I mean, why why go into a bookshop and cheat somebody? You yeah. go to a shop where you can eat something or, you know, buy some clothes. Nobody comes into a bookshop and buys a book and cheats something. No, we never, we never used to have a, that problem. But I think recently, now in the last few years, uh, we have been trying to be careful that all the uh, dues are paid because we did have some losses. We had losses from bookshops to whom we had lent books or sent books and who collapsed on their own okay. and then didn't pay us. Okay. I, there's one more thing. I helped, uh, we helped a lot of startups in the book yeah. trade from Alter Media, Kerala, uh, Trishur, Kerala, Trishur. Trishur, to um, Earth Care. To, uh, there was that, what was that, Ivo and all in Bangalore, they had... Uh, Maleshwaram, uh, this uh, majestic... Ikra. Book. No, Ikra. No, they? books, what some books it was called. Yeah. They their bookshop, their bookshop. Their bookshop, there was... Alvito and Ivo. Yeah. There was another uh, girl who started out in Chennai, I don't know what she called her bookshop. So what I would do is, I would say, okay, you want to start a bookshop like the Adindya bookstore, I'll send you a consignment, you start, and then you start ordering. Okay. So, you pay yeah. later on, but... You start. So we did have a few losses there. One was some bookshop in Pondicherry who had taken books with a bank guarantee. And so we, it was sent. But they defaulted even the bank. Oh gosh. And then the, I tried to contact the bank and the bank said even we cannot look at them because the shop is locked and it's you know gone into things. Oh gosh. That was one. There was another one. And now even recently popular bookstore in Pune shut down. And yeah. they owed us some money. So I don't know now how they shut down, how they didn't pay us. Because they were our regular customers. I, I would see. not like to badmouth them. Yeah. We did a lot of trade with them. Maybe because of COVID it just fell short. Maybe they'll get up again. I don't know. But their place is closed down. I think it's so... Of course, you're inspired a lot also. If we are into publishing today, it's because of people like you all, no? in that sense. Claude That's always true. jokes and says that Rico has copied my style <laughs> and all. But the fact is that you all did uh, inspire and... and, and Act as role models. Not just you. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All these bookshops across. And even publishers in that yeah. sense. No? Because the idea that some someone small can publish a book, get it outsourced to print and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Now, that of course, new idea. Rico, it's easier to publish. Yeah. Digital print, uh, printing yeah. has made it easier. I remember but the time Norman, these... Norman, Norman and all would come and uh, edit his book there. No? Uh, Transformation of Goa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Norman course, was a very diligent editor. He would uh, every day... Uh, we ran into trouble, I remember, with uh, Menaka Gandhi because he rewrote her book. She said, I don't like this book. At I all. see. <laughs> Send it back to her. I want my book published. Who has published it in this? And we went back and then soft edited it. But I see. he sort of, you know, made all the sentences and she didn't recognize that book. Then we did that Heads and Tails. Yeah. With which we ran into uh, uh, several editions of Heads and Tails. But that was because she had a market for them. I see. Uh, Manika Gandhi's yes, Heads and yes. Tails on animals. On animals. animals, right. So she was giving them uh, copies. Uh, she had, uh, must have been had some funds and she I was see. giving the copies when, when new NGOs started and so on. And of course, One Straw Revolution, Fukuyama, these are 33rd your... 33rd edition. My goodness. That's been our, uh, our uh, flagship, flagship book. And we kept the price. That is another thing. We always tried to keep the prices as reasonable, reasonable as we could. There was a markup, of course, because I understood the economics of how you market yeah. a book. But uh, we never went into, you know, something which was outrageously priced yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Most of our print runs were 1,000 copies. I think uh, one straw, the only one that we went in for 2,000 and fish curry rice maybe. Fish curry rice. Dharampal is, is your work. Dharampal is our work and Dharampal, I was surprised that it has such a good sale. I see. Uh, but we have still kept five... Uh, set book at 900. I Five see. volume book I see. is at 900. Basic. Well, less than 200 cost. a copy. Less than 200 a copy. Yeah. yeah. So those books are all the iconic books. If you had a chance to do things again, what would be different? Uh, what can I say which would be different? I think we tried out everything. everything. No regrets. Uh, no regrets. I would have liked to have, uh, you know, got a larger audience 
because one of our ideas which never fructified was to take the bookshop to different parts of the country to go to different places physically we managed to do it through bookshops which are set up but ideally we should have gone to every place found out people there who could set up a bookshop like this and you know that's the way this kind of literature could have got um, wide Spread, up yeah. another thing was that i felt that uh, we uh, were never able to market in the uh, national language in hindi now there's a great there's a big um, you know whenever we go to a book fair and so on people will ask what do you have in hindi and we really don't have titles so there is a, a large section of the population doesn't read english and we limited ourselves by marketing only in english i tried at one time konkani books i thought i'd try in for goa konkani books but even that did not you know i could get thomas dean some of his um, tiats things and few things yeah. like that but uh, uh, that is a handicap you know some way in which you can also reach the market which does not read english so we always feel when people when we go to a book fair and uh, especially in north india and they come to the bookshop and they say what do you have in hindi and then we have to say we, we hardly have we have a few titles but uh, not enough so that would have been something uh, good to have been able to publish amazing well. amazing amazing story and amazing <laughs> memories 36 years 35 years 36 well if you if you look at 1984 we registered 84. in 1988 but we started in 1984 So 84, almost uh, almost 38 years. 38 years, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. that's a generation <laughs> and more, one generation and five years. True, true, true. But it's an amazing story. I'm so happy I got it down because yeah. uh, I think it's important. No, it's to... it's it's a wonderful experience, and it was a. a the yeah. journey is more important than the destination. Though of course you've reached the destination also, but but I think the journey, the nuances. We reached of that... the destination at least a decade ago. I mean, we had uh, set up. There were so many bookshops. That was that was our idea. Was peak was peak was your peak year was. I think uh, to um, um, 2002, 2003 Aye, was uh, when we had that 25 lakh sales and all Aye, that, that kind of thing. That was a big thing because of the libraries and all who wanted the books and uh, a lot of people who knew. But our idea, as I said, was I mean we, we have not reached the northeast still. Where we've mm-hmm. not reached some parts there. We've not not reached the uh, Rajasthan very much, and you know. south yes south we are I fairly see. well covered big reading culture there yes and um, books sell there very well uh, small towns we have not managed to reach all the small towns so so those still remain but by and large by having earth care in kolkata uh, there was a uh, bookshops in uh, cd was in bombay, bombay. was uh, marketing uh, thrissur in uh, in altamedia yeah. and thrissur something in chennai they were all on the same lines though they did a little they were not uh, as um, what do you say third world focused or no yeah not as rigid yeah. as as not keeping okay. any western book they were not rigid at all okay. and they also tried to have things with a cafe and you know something else i think altamedia used to sell grain and various things okay, along see. with it but the idea was there the books were there Amazing. the ngo literature was there all of it was there and it was a wonderful experience for me to balance my court work and to have to something to do which is different you know to go to the i used to go to the bookshop at least once at least two three times a week check titles and I all see. but in recent times it became a bit less and that is why in a certain sense it was also time to close thank you thank <laughs> you so much and we will close here